back to Arsenal News TV and today we're going to look at four things from the Gunners 2-1 defeat to Wolves in the Premier League. So the first thing is, what a first half. Before it all came crumbling down on the stroke of half-time, Arsenal was simply sublime at Molyneux. The opening 46 or so minutes were hosting one of the most complete performances the Gunners had put in under Mikel Arteta. Defensively, they were solid, with Wolves only really able to create opportunities from set pieces. But it was going forward where the team really shone. But for the width of a post and a sm- slightly smaller size right boot for Alexandre Lacazette, Arsenal could have been three up by the time it all came crumbling down. There was a clear plan to target the inside channels of the Wolves back four with Nicola Pepe and Bukayo Saka's work in the half spaces causing Max Kilman and Nelson Semedo no end of problems. Going through the middle, Lacazette was a brilliant focal point again, while Emil Smith Rowe found pockets of space expertly in front of Connor Cody and Willy Bolly. Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka were also able to show off their tremendous passing range from deep as the Gunners showed off all the strings to their bow. For a team that has looked so one-dimensional going forward for so much of this season to offer so many different attacking threats was a delight to see. The only complaint going into added time in the first half was they weren't further ahead. Speaking after a game, a dejected Mikel Arteta was keen to take the positives from what was an excellent early display. You have to take the positive. The way the team is evolving, the way the team played against his opponent, which is really difficult to attack. The amount of chances that we created, he said. To play three days later after the game against United and how demanding it was mentally and physically, the way they started straight away. Arteta is clearly onto something with the way he has got his side playing right now. The only hope is that the result doesn't halt what is an excellent run of form. So the next thing on the list is Arsenal's goalkeeping crisis deepens. While there can be plenty of debate on the first red card, there can be no doubting the second one. Quite what was going through Bert Leno's mind as he chose to punch the ball out for a throw, in which way outside of his box is something we would never know. But the long and short of his moment of madness is that the German is now suspended for the Arsenal's next game against Aston Villa on Saturday. The footballing gods of fate have a cruel knack for slapping teams in the face with brutal bouts of irony. The Gunners will ha- be able to experience the full force of this as Ronald Alex Runderson lines up in goal in at Villa Park, while Emmy Martinez stands in between the sticks at the other end. Matt Ryan has been signed with the hope of avoiding this situation, but in the fine running tra- long running tradition of January long signings that dates back to Kim Kalmstrom and Dennis Suarez, the Australian is currently injured. Speaking after the game, McLaughlin has revealed that the Brighton Loney will face a race against time in order to be fit for the match. He had a muscular issue in the last two days, said the Spaniard. He hasn't been able to train and hopefully we can get him back in the last few days. To be fair to Ronison, he did make a couple of good decent saves after coming on for his Premier League debut. But there was a moment when playing out from the back that the Iceland international reminded us exactly why Arsenal was so keen to get better backup for Leno in January. As also looked to play out from the back towards the end of the match, the 25-year-old played a 1-2 with Gabriel opening up space for a quick ball to Granit Xhaka that would have beaten the Wolves press. Instead of playing the pass, however, would have a to kick the ball out for a quarter to the opposition. Both Gabriel and Xhaka were visibly furious as it seems as though the Gunners players have little faith in the man who is likely to start in goal on Saturday. More importantly, the Icelander doesn't look like he has that much faith in himself. It may be only for one game, but if Arsenal are unable to get Matt Ryan fit in time for their return to the Midlands on Saturday, then the club have a genuine crisis in the goalkeeping department. So the next thing on the list is Pepe's problem for Arteta. It was touched on earlier, but the brilliance of Nicola Pepe and Bukayo Saka on Tuesday night deserves further exploration. The quality of Saka has never been in doubt since he burst onto the season. The 90-year-old may not even have been fully fit, but if this is him not playing 100%, it's a scary thought to think what lies ahead. 
Max Kilman, who will likely still be having nightmares about the England international, who has just gone to another level after switching over to the right wing. Pepe, on the other hand, has not been quite so consistent. Last night, the Ivorian matched his compatriot and fellow Lille alumnus Javinho in terms of games played for Arsenal. While the 25-year-old is certainly the better player, the fact that he has the same number of goals and three less assists than the current Palmer winger is a sign of how inconsistent he has been. But in recent weeks, something appears to have clicked within Pepe that is allowing him to reach the best and most regular for we've seen him in a Gunners shirt. Perhaps it's a switch over to the left-hand side that has done it, but the Ivorian seems far more direct in this play, and with two goals in two games from the position, he is also much more of an attacking threat. His recent option was picked up by um, Ria Ferdinand watching on in the BT Sports studio. Pepe has got his swagger back. We have mentioned this press being so successful for the Arsenal team coming into the game. Here, they saw it, they smelt it, and they went in and win the ball. Pepe himself wins it first, and then it's about from here, from here. He puts it through Nelson Semedo's legs, a bit of luck and a bit of trickery. Shuffles his way through, and this finish is just sublime. What a finish of his right foot. He's starting to show glimpses of why they invested so heavily in him. His form over on the left is creating a selection headache now for Mikel Arteta. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is the captain and will surely start, but did little after coming on in the second half. Gabriel Martinelli is another who will want his chance on the left as well. But with the way Pepe is playing right now, he is surely undroppable. It's a tough balancing act for Arteta, who is finally starting to see the best from the £72 million man. So the final thing on the list is for Kos Arsenal. Talking about referees in the wake of a defeat often comes across as just making excuses. But in this instance, Arsenal can have every right to feel aggrieved. The man in the middle, Craig Paulson, came under immense stick on social media for what was an awful and ultimately game-changing decision to send David Luiz off. Statistics such as the fact that the Gardens have lost their last four games when Paulson has been in charge or the fact that the same referee was responsible for not sending off Sadio Mane for an elbow on Kieran Tierney early this season were quickly wheeled out as conspiracy theories began to circulate on social media. The idea of that Paulson had any malice behind his decision is clearly a ridiculous one. With the amount of time he took to pull out the red card for Luis, it is clear that he made a guess based on the player's reputation rather than the actual foul. This speaks to a declining standard of refereeing in the English game that Arsenal Arsene Wenger highlighted years ago, now in his final session after an equally farcical penalty had been given in a draw with West Brom. I'm angry because we have seen the same things again, said Wenger in 2017. I did fight hard for the referees to become professional many years ago and they did a good job to allow them to be professional, but I see no improvement. There are two countries in Europe where you have professional referees, in Italy and in England, and not one English referee will go to the World Cup, but everything is all right. We cannot say a word against them because they are untouchable, that is the truth. It's not only me that judges them. To be fair to Paulson, though mistakes can happen to even the best referees. Think of Howard Webb's failure to send off Nigel DeLong in the 2010 World Cup final. But this is exactly why VAR was brought into the game, to help officials on calls that are often tough to make. Bizarrely, the decision was upheld by Jonathan Moss in Stockley Park. Stranger still was that Moss felt it was such an obvious call that he didn't even invite Paulson over to the pitch side monitor to review his decision. Speaking after the game, Mikel Arteta admitted he still couldn't understand why the officials had chosen to send Luis off when it appeared that it was William Jose who had accidentally initiated the contact. If you want to talk about the decision, I've just seen the replay 10 times in 5 different angles and I cannot see any contact, he said. I would like to see if VAR has different angles. If they got it right and can justify that they got it right, I hold my hand up and apologise. All I'm saying is that I'm sitting here and I cannot see any contact. And that's really frustrating because it's a big moment in the game. There is nothing that can be done about the decision now though, and the reality is that Arsenal dropped three points that look to be in the bag. The hope now will be that they can use the injustice to bounce back and resume their good form rather than letting it derail their bid for a European place. Thank you for everyone that made it this far into the video. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next video. I am grateful if you made it this far into the video. Make sure you guys comment 
something in the comments and make sure you guys remain blessed and peace. Thank you.